How do you pick up the pieces after divorce? Are you feeling defeated, insecure, or of low worth after your divorce? The breakdown of a long-term intimate relationship can be very difficult. Your view of reality can feel challenged, and knowing how to move forward with confidence can be a struggle. Here are some simple steps you can follow to get your mojo back and let the past go. I'm James Burnham, and I work as a fear coach. I teach people how to use fear to break through those tough things in life. So, stick with me, I'll give you some points to follow. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? First thing you gotta do, lean into the feeling of loss, sadness, and pain for losing someone you loved. Second, take ownership of your part in this divorce so you can understand why you married someone with whom you are not compatible. The third thing you gotta do is let go of the things that are not your responsibility and stop seeking justification, affirmation, or an apology. Fourth, don't read emails, texts, legal documents, anything that ignites your frustration or makes you feel like you're less than or unseen or angry. Point five, practice daily affirmations to support your sense of value. Point six, find a support system of friends and family to help you when you're drowning. And point seven, consider this as a graduation to something better. If you take the time to learn about why things went the way they did, it will be a profound teaching experience that will add wisdom and insight to your life. Like everyone who faces divorce, mine was difficult. I had a lot of responsibility to take on. I had blame to carry. I had challenges to face. My children refused to see me. My finances were completely destroyed. I lost my biggest coaching client and I had no friends that were single. And I was in isolation with COVID. All of this stuff added up to really create for me what I felt was a very difficult circumstance. Facing this difficult circumstance was really the first thing that I had to learn to do. It was not something that I wanted to do. Honestly, initially, when I first left the house, I was living in a small town, consulting with a client, and completely on my own in my friend's house. And my first thought was, well, I could party and have fun. You know, that was where my head went to try to avoid the pain of it. But I didn't want to. I realized that's not what I wanted. And so I just kind of embraced the pain of it. I fell into it. I accepted it. I recognized how much I felt I had lost. And that process of doing that, as painful as it was, as lonely as it was, I think helped me move through things much quicker than I would have if I had ignored those feelings and really just kind of avoided it through distraction. Whatever that may be for you, I don't know. I, I'm not much of a drinker, so I, I went out and got drunk one time and thought, yeah, that's not really my cup of tea. You know, I, I tried some dating apps. I wasn't ready. I just wanted to hang out with people I liked. I tried a few different things like that and it wasn't working. Owning that space, sitting with it, recognizing my loneliness, recognizing the change, recognizing the pain that I felt from being rejected were all important things for me to do. And that allowed me to kind of move on and go through each of these steps. It was difficult for me because COVID kind of exacerbated my ability to move on and see people. But I honestly have come to believe that was a blessing because I couldn't distract myself during that isolation. I was left alone. I had to sit with what I had. And I had to come up with ways to deal with this situation. And I found myself blaming my spouse, feeling angry at her, feeling deep sense of frustration and wanting some sort of validation for yeah, I may have done things wrong, but you did this and that and this and that and looking for that where there was really no chance I was ever going to get any sort of validation. And when I began to turn away from that and really look to myself and own what I had done and what I had done was significant. I had cheated on my wife 10 years previous to that. And I did other things that she was not happy with beyond that. Right. But that was the big one. I feel like anybody that cheats has no right to expect to be in a marriage because that's a massive betrayal. And so owning that and then looking at what I had done allowed me to give her grace for how I felt I was being treated unjustly because I'd earned it, I felt. Now that is not to say that I get to be treated that way, but it allowed me to accept it kind of like 
Chris Rock did when he accepted the blow from Will Smith. He did not like to be hit. Will Smith, maybe he's a little bit out of line. He was right to stand up for Jada, but he crossed a line in that. But Chris was able to stand there and own that moment because he felt like he had crossed a line too. And I was a bigger betrayer, so I felt like, you know what? I can take this, I can handle it because I was owning my space and what I had done wrong. That allowed me to understand, I got something coming. <laughs> and it gave me some peace to know that, honestly. What was harder for me actually was learning to actually accept that there was some responsibility that wasn't mine to bear and ferreting that out. Because I struggled with my own sense of low self-worth, I really took everything on as my fault. And so accepting the blame was a good thing, but when I began to blame myself for things that were not my responsibility and hold myself responsible for that, there was also a lack of peace there. But as I began to see that, hey, I don't have to be responsible for this. I can be just in charge of what I brought. It helped me to move beyond this difficult impact and this breakdown of this relationship. And then through the process of the divorce, right, you, there, there are so many things that happen when the lawyers get involved and you get these documents. And I found that each time something came up in courts and I got legal documents and I would read what was said about me, it would ignite me and sometimes it would crush me. At one point, I had been served with some stuff that I was going to court for and I felt it was so completely misconstruing my character. I almost was in a point of nervous breakdown. I was in isolation. I was trying to run. I had some activities that I would do every day to try to keep myself grounded and I couldn't even run that day. It was a beautiful sunny day. I was out trying to run and I just kept honestly breaking down and crying. And I couldn't understand what was wrong with me. And I realized that in that moment, I was consuming myself by reading these texts that were angry, these emails that were angry, these legal documents that came at me. And I was arguing in my mind against what was being said and trying to seek justification because it just was such a pattern of destructive behavior that I was caught in. And I decided <clears throat> after talking to my brother-in-law, who's a lawyer, I was talking to him about how much each legal document would set me off. He said, don't read them. You don't need to read them. And so I stopped reading them and it lightened my load significantly. That was really a great moment for me. And then I began to practice daily affirmations so that I could see my own value and reaffirm to myself that I had value. As I did this, I was able to reach out to friends for support when I struggled. When I was having my breakdown, I called my sister. She invited me down. I was able to spend time with them and see that I was still loved and cared for by people that loved me. And that helped me. And then finally, I quit looking at this as a failure. And when I began to consider my divorce as a graduation to something better, I began to really learn what it was that I had done wrong and what I could do better and what I needed from a new person in my life. The things that I had not asked for or required when I was in a young relationship were no longer things that I would ever let slide again. So if you're in that space where you are struggling with heartbreak, consider using these methods to move through. It's painful, it's hard, but you can do it and it will bring you peace faster than you think. You will move to that side of recovery and be amazed at your strength because it's in you. I know it is. So if this is something that you have faced and you're struggling with it, I got another video for you, how to feel worthy of love. Check it out. I think it's something that could add to this conversation. I do work as a coach professionally. You can go to my website, jamesgburnham.com, and there is a place where you can set up a free consultation with me, have a conversation, see if we can work together. If I can help you, I'd love to be able to do that. And I'd love to know what you've done to heal your broken heart after a divorce and come to places where you feel like you're strong again. Or if you're still struggling, let me know, make some comments. I really would love to hear your insights. Like, subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss any other content, and stick around. That video is coming. What else are you gonna do? You should stick around and check this out. I'd love to hear what you have to say.